الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رمضان كريم Today inshallah we will be exploring the pedagogy of storytelling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran لَقَدَ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبَرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ That in the stories of the messengers are lessons for the people of intelligence. This ayah tells us that stories are not here for mere entertainment. Rather, stories are told to bring home important life lessons that are otherwise difficult to understand. This in Arabic is called taqrib al-afham, or making something easier to understand. There are two educational aspects that we can learn from the pedagogy of storytelling. One is that intelligent people should take a lesson from it. That is, from the perspective of a learner, we can look at stories for the, for the purpose of analysing and adopting its values into our lives. The other is from the perspective of an educator, and that is to use storytelling and drawing parables as a method of teaching. The Qur'an uses this technique time and time again. In fact, it is said that one third of the entire Qur'an is stories of the people before us. Now, what is a story? A story is more than just a series of events. A series of events is a plot. Story is how that series of events affects and transforms the characters. So while the plot can be said to be external events, a story would be internal events or internal conflict. There is a conflict that goes on inside of somebody and they overcome that and we take lessons and we take inspiration from their internal journey. For instance, we see in the life of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam that he had a mission. He wanted, to free, he wanted to use his privilege as a prince of Egypt to liberate the Banu Israel from unjust slavery. However, one day in defending his fellow Israelite, he accidentally killed a Coptic Egyptian. Because of this, he feared that Fir'aun was going to kill him. As such, he had to run away. After many years, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with prophethood, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was told to drop his staff and he saw it turn into a snake. Naturally, this would give fear to a person. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam initially fled Egypt because he did not want to be confronted by Fir'aun. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him to go back to Egypt and confront Fir'aun himself. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam has to overcome his natural human fears. Remember, bravery is not about being fearless. Rather, it is about doing the right thing and standing up for the right causes despite your fears. This is why bravery is a praised virtue. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam returned to Egypt, he confronted Fir'aun, he gave him the message, he talked to him about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he demanded from him to release the Banu Israel from slavery. He even accepted a challenge from the magicians to engage in a showdown in, on the day of their festival. Musa alayhi salam's staff turned into a snake yet again. This journey put him into the deep end and he had to overcome his internal fears. Eventually, when Fir'aun had enough, his army chased Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and the Banu Israel and wanted to massacre them all. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was leading the people on an exodus. However, they came to a stage when in front of them was a river and behind them was an army rushing to kill them. Naturally, the people panicked. They said, we're doomed now. Fir'aun is going to kill us. At this point, you might expect Musa alayhi salatu wasalam to react like any other human being and to have some natural fear. Instead, we see a character development and a growth in his story. He says, Inna ma'ya Rabbi sayahdeen. Indeed, my Lord is with me and he will show me the way. This shows us the completion of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam's character growth and overcoming his fears throughout this story. And we take inspiration and solace from the great people before us in how to navigate the difficulties of life, both external and internal. This is one way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants stability to our hearts. So storytelling is an important pedagogy, both for educators as well as learners. And this is why literary criticism, or al-naqd al-adabi, is very important for the believers to learn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to contemplate on the stories of the prophets and the stories of the previous nations before us and may he subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to draw lessons from them. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhum.